It's time for another Ask Me Anything video. Today at QueenBeing.com, we're answering a question from a survivor who asked me to discuss narcissists and exclusion. So that's exactly what we're talking about today at QueenBeing.com. Narcissists who use exclusion as a way to punish and control their victims. So let's get started. Closed captioning provided by Athena Moberg and CPTSDFoundation.org. My name is Angie Atkinson and on this channel I offer free daily video coaching to help you discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse in toxic relationships. I like to call it toxic relationship rehab. So if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button and let's get going. Our question today comes from a Spanily member right here on YouTube. Just me says, still wondering about exclusion. My ex used exclusion in such a blatant and cruel way and wondering why because it drove me to reality so quickly. All other nasty behaviors as well. Silent treatment, gaslighting, lying, projecting, future faked, a lot, devaluing, physical abuse, and of course all after four months of unbelievable love bombing and how perfect you are for me. The exclusion was so out of place. I'm so curious about it. You first have to remember that narcissists have a relationship cycle. It starts with the idealization phase or the love bombing, which you described as amazing, and that's absolutely true. And then you go into the devalue phase where things start to get bad, and this is where manipulation tactics like exclusion come in. And once you get through the devalue phase, of course, you go in right into the discard phase, which means the narcissist leaves you either emotionally or otherwise. These cycles are common to most narcissists. And like like I said, the exclusion is part of the devalue process. So the narcissist is using this behavior to make you feel like you're not worthy, like you don't deserve to be loved, like you don't deserve to be included in your social activities or whatever else you're dealing with. Whether we recognize it or not, most everyone's habits and behaviors are a result of some form of conditioning. And for those who have experienced the painful, all-encompassing abuse that a narcissist is known for, the conditioning hasn't always been in our best interest. It begins when we're small children. Our parents' opinions of us begin to help us form our own opinions, our own perceptions of ourselves. If we're cursed with narcissistic parents, our perceptions are skewed or twisted, often just plain wrong. That's because as children, we're kind of like sponges. We absorb everything in our environment, including and especially the opinions of our parents. If they tell us we're beautiful, we believe it. If they tell us we're horrible and we're sick and we're ugly and terrible, we believe that too. And it doesn't end there. Adding the opinions of your teachers, your siblings, your friends, and later those of your spouse, your boss, your coworkers, neighbors, and don't forget the lady of the dry cleaner last week that gave you the dirty look. All of this conditioning left unchecked can sometimes add up to a very negative self-image, especially if you don't know that you don't have to accept it. And we become what we perceive. We are what we believe that we are. Now, let's talk a little bit more about what exclusion is, and then we'll talk more about how we can deal with it. If you were ever bullied in school, you might recognize the exclusion tactic that we're talking about today. And that's when a bully chooses one or more victims and excludes them from the other children in the class by ridiculing them and minimizing them and teasing them or just plain old pushing them away. Narcissists use this same tactic in relationships more frequently than you would expect. They use it to manipulate you and punish you. Like I mentioned, excluding people is not just a mean way that kids deal with each other on the playground. It's also a tactic often used by narcissists as a way to control or punish the people they consider their narcissistic supply. For example, let's say that you and your spouse go to church together and at church everyone hangs out in the social hall afterward having donuts. If your narcissist is angry at you or upset with you, they may intentionally stand somewhere you're not and exclude you from the chit chat or the regular banter of the after church crowd. Somehow they won't invite you to get involved in the conversation they're in or you'll be pushed away to take your child to the bathroom or something while the narcissist tells jokes and gets all kinds of attention. Behavior that persistently excludes you from activities in your life, from social gatherings, from all of these things is quite literally emotional abuse. It's painful, it can make you feel awkward and uncomfortable and even if that person isn't doing anything but not talking to you, sometimes that energy feels like it almost pokes you. It's so big and heavy kind of feels like something sitting on your chest and you might find yourself if you're anything like me constantly trying to fix it 
trying to think of things that you can say that will make them really understand finally what you've been trying to say all this time. And unfortunately, it doesn't always work out that way. In case you aren't aware, this is just another way that the narcissist attempts to control you. It is a form of emotional abuse, and it's usually used by narcissists or people with narcissistic tendencies. It is all about putting the narcissist in the position of being in control of the situation, and it's designed to help the narcissist make you shut your mouth, as in to avoid you asserting yourself or having any opinion whatsoever. In some cases, they do it in order to increase the conflict, make it more difficult for you, avoid resolving the conflict because that makes you uncomfortable and they like that feeling. Sometimes it's about not taking personal responsibility or not making a compromise. And in many cases, it's about punishing you for something that they think you did wrong, like a perceived ego slight. Of course, what happens is very often exactly what they want to happen. They get a reaction from you and they feel like they are in control of you. So you obviously, you're an empath, you understand how to deal with people, you have the ability to compromise, a strong conflict resolution skill set. You probably in general don't even enjoy conflict. So you're probably trying really hard to figure out how to fix what happened, try to make them understand you. But of course, this is generally met with contempt, disdain, more silence, completely ignoring you, whatever. And basically this makes you feel like you're nothing, like you're so insignificant that you don't matter or that you and your issues become less and less real, more and more non-existent for the narcissist. Of course, that makes you feel like you're not good enough, like you have nothing to offer, like everything's your fault. And before you know it, you might find yourself apologizing to the narcissist, even though clearly you're not the one that should be apologizing. Most narcissists are about as emotionally mature as a toddler or maybe up to a five or six year old child. They kind of pout. They don't want to play with their friend in the sandbox. They fight with their friends on the playground. They decide they don't want to share their toys, whatever. It's the same kind of thing. And just like a five-year-old, like we've talked about recently, a narcissist acts just like a child emotionally. They might refuse to talk with you, angrily storm off, and then you are left feeling like, what in the heck just happened? I'm confused. I'm rejected. I don't understand what the heck just happened. It's the same deal with the child on the playground. But in this case, since the narcissist gets to decide whether or not they're going to talk to you or give you a quote-unquote chance, well then there's this false but strong sense of control. So the narcissist will then demand that you apologize for whatever it was that you may have done, some BS made up transgression or maybe just the fact that you had the nerve to, I don't know, set a boundary or ask for equal treatment. Sometimes this makes the narcissist want to abandon you and then you start the discard phase. And this is when you might start actually present an ultimatum and say, look, this is it, I need to know, yes or no. So then at that point, the narcissist might might decide to end the relationship rather than actually admit being abandoned because they might think, well, now you've set this ultimatum and you're saying you're going to leave if we don't fix this. And so I'm just going to leave you instead. All right. So how do you deal with dealing with a narcissist? Like I've talked about many times, you've got to understand that narcissists are limited people. They do not have the ability to feel empathy or to compromise or anything like that. So understand that you don't need to tolerate it. It's all about getting that false sense of control and in order to sort of reclaim the narcissist's fragile ego to give it some stability again. So that's why they cut the contact. That's why they stop talking. When we're talking about a more extreme narcissist or a sociopath or psychopath, it gets even worse because then they are all about control and power. And then the healthy boundary that you set or the issue that you brought up, it becomes a narcissistic injury. Their little ego gets involved. And my gosh, you suffer. You feel completely bewildered, confused, emotionally devastated. If this is happening to you and you've tried to share your feelings, you've tried to make your point, make set your boundaries, whatever, you have to recognize that you're not the problem here. If it's a chronic thing that's going on and on, you got to step away from it and you've got to stop walking on eggshells in order to keep that person happy because they won't be happy. You have to understand that a narcissist's communication patterns, they remain the same regardless of who they're talking to and dealing with. And this is true with you. It will be true with a new supply if one comes along. It will be true with everyone in their life who they're close to. And unless the narcissist chooses to change something or is willing to change something, then nothing changes. The narcissist does not change. Yeah, in healthy relationships, this type of behavior can be changed because both partners at that point would be willing to work on it. It's just dysfunctional, but not unhealthy. But when you get to an unhealthy 
relationship with someone who is pathologically narcissistic, you've got to be focusing on yourself now. You've got to focus on self-care. And quite honestly, again, you just have to learn that sometimes it's just you have to walk away and detach in order to avoid feeding into the mind games. The narcissist will try to suck you back in if they think that you're happy with them not talking to you. They will try to hoover you. But remember, they also want you to chase them and beg for their attention. They want you to feel out of control and like nothing. And so if you want to win this deal, if you want to stop being treated this way, don't try to win back their approval. Don't try to get their attention. Take a minute, reevaluate. Is this really something I want in my life? Do I need this relationship here? And if I don't, what can I do to get out of it? Consider it a break. Consider it a period of freedom so you can take some time and think about how can you take better care of yourself and what kind of support can you get to move forward? What do you need to move forward away from them? That is what I would suggest. Someone who really cares for you and really loves you would never treat you that way. They would make some effort to meet those needs that you have and not neglect them. My friend, you are worthy. You deserve to be seen. You deserve to be heard. You deserve to be in a relationship where your needs are met and your voice is heard. You don't deserve to be silenced. Take care of yourself and know that you deserve better. Now this brings me to the question of the day. And the question of the day is, have you experienced exclusion from a narcissist? And if so, how did that work for you? And what would you do today knowing what you know now differently. Share your thoughts, share your ideas, share your experiences in the comment section below and let's talk about it. I've been doing a thing in my videos where I'm sharing a screen grab of my subscribers in fast motion and I had a couple of people say to me they would prefer that I don't do that, so I'm going to stop that. But I do want to say thank you so much for being a subscriber, for being part of my family, and for being part of my community. Everyone who watches my videos, likes my videos, interacts with my videos in any way, comments, you're all helping me to spread my message just a little further and help even more survivors to overcome narcissistic abuse. I really appreciate it and I just want to say thank you one more time. And while I'm at it, I'd like to offer a quick shout out to my amazing channel members who support me through the YouTube channel membership program. With their help, I'm able to produce more videos, be more connected to you, and offer more free resources at queenbeing.com so that you can discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse without having to pay for anything. That means the world to me because it is my life's mission to help as many people as possible to do exactly that. Thank you so much. My inner circle includes Essa, Tiffany, Stephanie, Denise, Deborah, Missy Etta, Lou, Mental Hilarity, Julie, Michael, Shauna, Kimberly, Jen, Trisha, Stacy, T-Bear, Sylvia Rose, Thoy, Victoria, Julie, Patty, La Precious, Beautiful Purpose, Abraham, Chantel, Ashley, Carrie Ann, Charity, Steph, Dana, Mo Cowboy, Shay, Christina, Ray Ray, T, Christy, Boku, Alda, Smith and Wesson, Ms. Lisa, Martha, Freedom Lee, Mindy, Lynn, Marsha, Linnell, Phoenix, Cherie, Alice, Carrie, Angel, Bible News Radio, Linda, Charlie, Laura, Pierlala, Janet, Paul, Delilah, Sarah. Lee, Marlene, James F, Trisha, Life's Revival, Lorenzo, Deborah, Roxanne, Susan, and my very first supporter, Angela Falsetto. Thank you. Again, I just want to say thank you so much for hitting that join button. Your support really does mean a lot to me. Again, thank you so much. That's all I've got for you right now, but as always, thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life, and hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. Now, before I go, make sure you take a look at the videos I'm leaving for you right there and right there, and while you're here, hit that subscribe button so we can stay connected and continue on this healing journey together. I'll see you soon.